Well, hello, folks. Welcome to episode one of season 11 here of this say with Riga FC. I am the Custer Prof. This is the Latvian job. And um, yeah, we, we're back for the start of the new season, but we've got no knockout European football and I've had a pretty crappy transfer window. So all in all, it's not gone great. Yeah, so uh, we'll start here. Hopefully, hopefully this is not a prelude to things of things to come. But um, the good thing, good news is we have done incredibly well in the league, and we still have our hundred percent record going on. Uh, bad news is we've lost three midfielders. Let's let's go and have a look at that. So this is the sum of the transfer business. Really, um, there have been a few uh, players released. I just thought. Finally, I'm going to do something about the the acres of crud that sat in the uh, in the B team. So a bunch of those have got have gone. Uh, we've tried to keep the players who are slightly capable of actually coming in and doing something, um, or who are young and may turn into something. So we have sold three midfielders. Um, some of them we wanted to go, some of them we didn't. Human Tariq, yes. He had reached that merry old age where his free kick taking was not enough of a reason to keep him around because the rest of him had just degraded into someone slow and fat and not very good. He's now described as a veteran. So he's gone. He's gone back to Iraq, I think, and good luck to him there. Ricard Oslins, I was umming and ahhing over getting rid of him. In the end, I thought, screw it. We've got enough Latvians elsewhere. It's not going to matter. And uh, we sold them to RFS, who got relegated for quite a lot of money. I feel there's a lot more money flying around the Latvian leagues at the minute. And finally, Carlos Almeida has just gone. This is one I did definitely not want to happen. He was our best midfielder. We had this ridiculously low um, release clause because that's, that's all I could do. They, the, they, they would not sell him to us for anything higher. The agent, the damn agent, decided... That was what what was what. So we've been fending off teams for ages, and finally, this team from Brazil, Internacional, I think, uh, have come in and met his release clause, and he's just gone. So that's not great. But you see, on the left side, you have spent some money. Christian Yata, he is somebody I think who is going to do a reasonable job in that ball-winning midfielder role, and potentially else elsewhere. What he has got. Is the ability to put his foot on the ball make a pass uh, if he needs to but he's got decent tackling very good technique and look at the determination bravery and those physical attributes so he's young a 21 year old Romanian really happy with that I think he's going to develop and we've got Misu in the squad who can help him out language wise so that was good I was hoping to bring in a veteran player in the midfield and the only player I could find was Mangala from uh, Dortmund um, but we would have had to pay sort of like 10 million pounds for him and then a wage that would have bankrupted the club so it just wasn't worth it and I feel we just we're gonna have to continue with what we've got at the minute um, it's a smaller squad um, so hopefully that means more people get more games and people might so pissed off all the time they're not playing but we will see. Schedule wise, it's been all wins. We've only had one game where we've conceded goals and it was a bit of a tight one that. So starting off, we beat Noah 2-0 at home. Krollis and Misu, good start. Tough game away against Spartak, who so are always one of the best tight sides in the league. Krollis had Raf, who's been playing really well. Messina and Daff, um, they did take the lead and they did cause us some trouble in that game. Uh, it was not one way traffic, so that's either because we've got worse or that Spartak's maybe are a little bit better, but we'll see later in the season when they go into Europe. Dynamo Riga, they were smashed 5-0. Popovic, Erglis, Ulderikis, the centre-back and Pape Daff. Tukums at home, 4-0 this time. Erglis, Daff, Stankus and an own goal. And what an own goal it was. Meta, 2-0 this time. Krolis and Nisinovs, they did have a player sent off. He didn't really make the most of it. Didn't really need to. Lipaya, away. Aldrich's hat trick, very, very nice. Ventspils, who are the team who look like they're going down yet to pick up a point this season, already on nine games in, eight games in. 
Mendia uh, two goals and Lysenovs, Kreis and Aldrikis and then the game just before we've come to a uh, 5-0 victory against Alder, Kreis, Hattrick, Lysenovs and Daff spreading the goals around not disappointed at all we're going to be playing Valmiri today who are second in the league this is what the league looks like you can see Krollis leads the line uh, in terms of goals but got this lad who's worth you know coming on to a million pounds potentially however you recognize whatever that means not doesn't look anything as good as Krollis but he's certainly better than what's been there and they spent a decent amount of money on him so he scored seven goals well well done <laughs> Still a long way to go to, to get to our level, but it's it, it's it's pretty pleasing that the league looks like it's improving. Um, so yeah, we we've also had a few chats with the board. I tried to get them to expand the stadium. They basically told me to go away after the meeting, go away and never talk to us. I talked to them about it again. It was quite dismissive. So uh, yeah, that's fun. You also see our position the league position has, has gone up we're we're not far away from kind of something happening in terms of um uh, the uh, the league um qu 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 ah, what's it called quantification coefficients yeah you can see riga 39th which is pretty cool we've come on a bloody mile and here latvia are 20th so if we can get to 17th three places ahead uh, we will be getting a champions league second spot if we can then get two places higher we will get another team in the champions league and we'll start to get player teams in the euro cup and that is a big step forward for this uh, this nation and that means money will start coming in much more roundly into the league so that that's a pleasing thing how far have we got to do to get that well at the minute we're already sort of sitting above one two i think we'll go up a couple next time round. we just need a good season i think a really good season similar to the one we had a couple of years ago where we get through maybe the europa league into the latter stages that that is what we need to make it uh, make it happen anyway folks let's go and play valmeria I think we should win this if we don't I think this is number 125 if we win this which would be bloody amazing team we're going with is this one Krolis, Aldericus, Popovic, Nyata, Franco, Hadraf Nyata's not really a player who plays in that position but he's, he's there anyway at the back Messina the centre-back Stankers and Mendia and Yahore in goal it's a strong side but it's Valmiria, so we don't want to take them too lightly. I mean, I would have thought pretty much any combination of players in more or less the right position from this squad should be able to beat them. But, you know, everyone's got to get games. So uh, let's, let's, uh, let's, get, let's get in there and give them, give them a stern talking to because they are four points behind us, I think. And it would be good to make that gap just a little bit bigger. Right, we've started up, and here we go. Two minutes in, Popovic pops it down. Mendia playing it right back today. Their uh, goalkeeper makes a bit of a hash of it, and they've cleared it out. All the way out to Stankus. And uh, Mendia is again running down this right side. In it goes, and cleared it out again. It's Messina now. It's the ball's desperately trying to find its way in and eventually it's Aldrichis who does get the shot away very very nice another header Aldrichis was he on six seven goals for the season very very good from him oh corner Franco takes it Vieira is wanting to kind of call it a day he's 32 so it kind of makes sense and he's on one of the biggest wages at the club so wouldn't be the worst thing there he's on 20 grand a week which is, is really expensive for us. Krollis, oh my god. I think someone in the back of the crowd there has just taken it full on in the face. Well, uh, pretty much end of the first half. Very few uh, highlights, but we clip that one in and looks like Krollis just nods it in for 2-0. Is that going to be allowed? 
There's potential for offside there. He was certainly close for it, but no one's even asking, really. A draft just heads it in, and Krollis, in a raft of players, gets his head on it, and uh, another goal for him. Solid, a solid start, really. We've 14 shots, 10 goals. They've only had one shot. There's only one way this, this game's going, really, isn't it? Right, so just one made one change. Hadaraf was looking tired, so we brought Iliev on. Strong young player. We've got to try and figure out who the next Almeida is going to be in this in the players we've got. We we are trying to sign somebody as well. Right, another corner. Franco over the top, Ulderikis. He's 32 now. Question is how long do we keep him around for? He does offer something very, very different from anybody else. Free kick. He's going to take it. Ilyev's going to take it. I'm not sure what his free kick ability is, but he just clips the outside of the post. I thought Vieira might have been a player. If he's on the pitch, he's not on the pitch. That's why. Another highlight. It's starting to come a little bit more thick and fast. Mendy now chips it in. Cross instead of just nodding in the near post he decides to go far post for no apparent reason oh dear me anyway we're going to make a couple of subs here i think we're going to take uh old Rikis off and we'll take Krollis off for, bring Erglis on let's make another one Vieira for Franco as i say doesn't really matter who we bring on because whoever it is he's going to be better than them I shouldn't say that, should I? See, that, that is the sort of thing that bites me in the bum. Lisinovs runs through and just blasts it over the top. Yeah, a lot of highlights. And they're coming down the left side. They're not going to get a shot, surely. Left completely alone. It, well, it is 2-1 now. First shot on target. And what was I saying earlier? Okay, they've got it back again. This would be utterly disasterful if we if it all went wrong here in front of the cameras. We didn't get number 125. I mean, we've been 100% in control of this match all the way through. They've had one shot, scored with the header. And I don't know whether that's just complacency at the back or what, but it does seem... And I, I guess most people who've experienced the side who are have more of the ball. Look at it through. It's in. It's 2-2. Two, two. My God. Well, what are we doing here? Oh, my. Is that, is that allowed? It is, you know. Look at that. Oh, Jesus. We're going attacking. We're going positive. We're going attacking. We've got one sub to play. Right, I don't really know what to do here because we... <laughs> this has come out of absolutely nowhere. We're going to have to go a little bit more attacking, I think, with our... We just don't have the right players in there. This is my fault, I think. Gonna play those two a little bit higher up. Vieira is gonna put Nieta there. This is it. Vieira there. And Pape Daff is gonna come on there. Right. Come on. Is this it? Is this it? Come on, come on, Fiera. Oh, it's gone wide. It's gone wide. I can't believe it. The run's over. The run is over. <laughs> Look at the end here. 34 shots, 18 on target. They had two shots. Two shots <laughs> of any note. Oh, oh, that hurts. 
It was going to happen eventually. We've had three seasons back to back to back wins. And as soon as I said, this is, this, this is done, then FM, Ooh, <laughs> as I quit the game, I don't, are you sure you want to quit the game? No, I don't want to quit the game. <laughs> Let's see how many games it was. Well, at least, do we, do we see? don't think we're gonna see I think it's a hundred no randomly it doesn't say I think it finished up at 124 games one on the trot which that's pretty good isn't it <laughs> anyway folks ah oh, well you got to see where it ended you got to see where it ended it's a historic game anyway against Valmiri who are one of the better sides no way they deserved it absolutely no way but um, they finished a couple of chances and the second one was particularly tasty so we're going to be coming back somewhere around here for uh, the um, just in preparation for the um, the start of the European season so we'll see who we're kind of going, coming up against I, I think we we'll, and then hopefully we'll come back for the qualification game for the Champions League and see if we get through that and then We'll see whether we can actually get through the Champions League group, which we've yet to do 10 seasons in. We've been very, very close a couple of times. Last season, not so much, but I desperately want to make sure we we give a good or better account of ourselves this, this time round because we weren't great last season. Anyway, folks, let me know what you thought of that in the comments. Uh, did you see that draw come here? Because I certainly didn't. If you enjoyed the episode, make sure you hit the like button, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you on the next one. Goodbye.